As you might know, there is a war raging in Ukraine. Large parts of the country have been occupied by Russian invaders um, and death and destruction is raining down upon the innocent civilians of the Ukraine. Many of their men, many of their women indeed, many of their citizenry have been recruited into the army and taken up arms against the invaders and they're doing a bloody good job. But many others uh, have had their homes destroyed and need to flee. And New Zealand, like much of the rest of the world, um, created a temporary visa category for war refugees from Ukraine. So did Australia. But the number of such people who have come here is nothing like uh, proportionally what the Australians have. Why is that? And have we got some rules in place that are really stopping us from doing as much as we could for Ukrainian war refugees? Well, to discuss this, we're joined by uh, Kate Ates, uh, Terska. Terska, I've got that right. She is from the group Mahi for Ukraine, which has been advocating for Ukrainians and Ukrainian war refugees here in uh, New Zealand. Uh, Kate, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for being with us. Good morning. Thank you. Now, Kate, firstly, tell us a little bit about yourself. What is Mahi for Ukraine and why are you involved in it? Um, Mahi for Ukraine is um, a volunteer group, but essentially it is a cause. Um, it's basically the work that we do for Ukraine. Uh, we created Mahi for Ukraine at the beginning when the war for first started uh, because we needed a sort of a group that would unite Ukrainian voices here in New Zealand and represent these voices uh, when we talk to government around their response. Uh, with our Mahi, we advocate for immigration, sanctions, humanitarian aid and diplomatic relations. All right. Um, and New Zealand has, like many other countries, created special visa conditions for people who are fleeing the war in Ukraine, correct? Yes. Are they working in terms of providing a safe haven for people escaping the war? Well, what, what New Zealand has done is put, put forward a temporary work visa, as you say. And what that does is it means that there's quite a lot of criteria around, firstly, the um, eligibility for those who can sponsor or be sponsored. So it's a sponsorship visa. In order to bring your immediate family, you need to be a New Zealand citizen or resident of Ukrainian descent. And then you can only sponsor certain types of family members. And you are responsible um, entirely for financial support and everything associated with getting So them you're here. saying we've said, oh, bring, bring us your huddled masses, but only if you can support yourself, you have a sponsor and the breadwinner exactly. of the family comes with you. That is it. And what have other countries have done in Australia, obviously, is one of those is they've offered humanitarian visa. Um, and that means that it comes with support package, uh, socialization programs, various other things that are wrapped around. Um, so it's not just... That any like, refugee would get, like housing assistance, language assessment, assistance, right? Potentially. It really varies. And I guess any anybody who's either a humanitarian visa entrant or a refugee would generally get some type of support. Where this is what we have here is okay. obviously they're not counted as refugees. They simply have the right to enter New Zealand. Okay, so we actually, we might be saying we're doing great stuff, but all we've provided is uh, a little tweak on work visas. What does that mean in the number of people who have come to New Zealand or got refuge in New Zealand compared with, say, Australia, which has truly made an exception and on humanitarian grounds? What's the difference? I mean, how many Ukrainians are living in Australia temporarily while the war goes on compared to New Zealand? Well, just from the latest stats that we have here in New Zealand, on this visa we had um, under 400 people who have entered, and in Australia it's um, 5,000 or more. Uh, oh, well, that's quite a difference. So we've got 400 or less under our not very generous yes. scheme. They have had 5,000. And I guess the thing is that a lot of fathers a lot of husbands are actually staying behind in Ukraine to fight. Exactly. Um, males under 60 obviously weren't able to come. So what we have here is elderly children and um, some females. Mm. And when we talk to about parents and grandparents, mm. you know, the fact that they expected to earn their own living is, yeah. Yeah. is, is not really realistic. So, okay, so we're saying it is old people and children who need to flee the war 
Oh, come to New Zealand, but you can only come to New Zealand if you can work and, and support yourself, and clearly old people and children can't do that. So it's kind of ridiculous. Right. We're not offering so them anything. Well, it falls to their family, and I guess it really depends on who can really add um, their parents, their um, children, or any other additional mouth to their budget. Yeah. Well, Kate, have you been to the government and pointed out this problem to them, and what has their response been? So what we have done is, um, actually, we've done this a while back. We, we did a survey to identify the barriers um, for the visa uptake, and what has come out of that survey was that Obviously, the eligibility criteria was um, something that deterred people from being able to sponsor their loved ones, but the, the main thing was the financial barriers. And we've gone to the government with a number of um, pragmatic recommendations around what they could do better, how this visa could be amended potentially. Like Australia, they haven't started out where they are today. This visa was different. Um, the visa categories they had and the support they had was different, but all the time it evolves because they notice the need for additional support. Okay. So we've gone to the government with these recommendations, and so far we met Minister Wood last week. We talked about it, and so far they are committed to staying with this visa edges. And so they're, um, they're saying they're saying rack off. We're not going to change it. Not yet. They haven't indicated that they want to widen um, any of the criteria for sponsorship. Okay, have you been to see other political parties and asked them if they got into government, if they would change? We, well, so far we've been operating um, in good faith and we really wanted to work with the government and have that constructive dialogue with the government in the hopes that they would want to... Well, I would say, it. Kate, the very fact that you're talking to me on the platform and I know you've talked to other media indicates that acting in good faith with this government hasn't got you very far. It, it hasn't indeed, and um, I guess it's time for us to potentially think of um, other options and see what else we can do you know, with our advocacy. Um, yeah. the, the community expects so much from us, the role that we play. Uh, people are disappointed, people looking to us for solutions, so we, we need to be considering what else can be done. Hey, Kate, keep us posted on this. I think it is an issue that, I don't know, New Zealanders in the street are with you on. And I think most of us would like to see our government uh, be more humane and more giving in this regard. I certainly would, as an individual. Absolutely. Um, we'll, we'll let you know how we go. Okay, thank you. That is Kate uh, Teska uh, from the group Mahi for Ukraine Spokesperson. So we say to... The old people, the women, the children, the vulnerable in Ukraine, sure you can come here. We'll give you no assistance and you have to be sponsored by a family member and there are restrictions on you coming here if you don't have your bread earner, your bloke with you. Bloody ridiculous. It's actually no help at all. So as a result, how many Ukrainians have sought uh, refuge? And it's only temporary that these people want to come here until they beat that bastard Putin. Um, Australia, 5,000. 5,000 Ukrainian women and children and old people have got refuge in Australia. How many have we had? Less than 400. Jeez, is that kind, Jacinda? Is that really being kind? And you heard us say, uh, we went to see Michael Wood. The government said, rack off. We're not going to change the criteria. What a bunch of bees, to be honest.